My name's uh, Shane McKenzie. I'm going to read about the first half of a story called Stab the Rabbit from my collection Wet and Screaming because the second half is full of murder and torture. <laughs> Mom and Dad ain't going to like it, I said, but Randall wasn't having none of it. He took that little device right into the living room and sat down with it in his lap. Close the door already, he said, his eyes on the screen. The color of it shined up in his face and was so bright it looked like fruit juice splashed over. And you won't say shit to mom and dad, because if you do, I'll kick your ass so hard you'll be shitting out your nose. Only to take my eyes off the salesman for a second, a short man, kid short, midget height since he was an adult, red clothes, so red it hurt if you looked too hard, red hat too, one of them hats with the little propellers on top, and it spun. There wasn't any wind, but that thing spun the whole time he was giving his spiel. And after Randall took the little device from him, the salesman thanked him and started to leave, backing away from the door, smiling real big, so big it was like the corners of his mouth unpeeled from his face. I blinked, and he had his back to me, walking away, slow, like he was on roller skates with slugs for wheels. When Randall said he was going to kick my ass real hard, I turned away from the salesman to look at him, but only for a second, real quick. When I turned back, the salesman was gone. It didn't seem possible for me to disappear so fast. Close the door, boy, you retard. I did. Who you take that thing for? What if mom and dad can't afford it? You didn't hear the man, it's free. You were standing right there when he said it. There ain't nothing free. Why would a man go door to door giving away free? What is that anyway? Randall hadn't taken his eyes off it since he wrapped his hands around it. He squinted, licked his lips, swiped his fingers across the wide screen. One of them iPads or a knockoff or something like it. Okay then, you think the man's just gonna let you have it for nothing? Why not? Because he's a salesman. They sell things. He ain't Santa Claus. Randall finally took his eyes off the iPad knockoff so he could make an ugly face at me. Will you shut up and come over here already? This thing is pretty cool. Something about the whole deal made me feel funny. Like when I got to pee at night and it's dark in the house and I got to run by the guest room with the door that don't shut all the way. I can't see nothing in there and I know it's stupid to be scared of a dark and empty room. But that don't mean I don't run by it as fast as I can just to make sure. It was like that. Something about the device and the salesman who gave it to us made me want to run real fast. But I couldn't let my big brother know I was scared of some stupid computer or whatever it was. I didn't really know what it was. I was pouring myself a bowl of cereal when the man knocked at the door. By the time I had made it over there, he was already halfway through explaining it to Randall. And he didn't start it over on account of me. Probably because he could see on Randall's face that he already had a sale. Even though he gave it to him for free, there had to be a catch. I was just a kid and I knew that. Nothing's free. Ain't no such thing as free. Mom and Dad had to go visit Aunt Priscilla over in Houston. Boyfriend went over and went and beat her up, and she didn't have nobody else to call about it. Since me and Randall were old enough to take care of ourselves, they let us stay home. Said they'd be back in the morning. It was a weeknight, but since it was summer vacation, we didn't have nothing to do. Left us 20 bucks for pizza, but me and Randall agreed to save it. Used it to buy some comics or a new video game. The only problem was they gave the money to Randall, and I had a feeling I would never get it. I would never get to see it. You didn't give him that 20, did you? I asked just to make sure. I told you, retard, it was free. Who being a dumbass and check this out, it's got TV on it. He held up the device so I could see it clear, and when I saw it, most of the weirdness I was feeling just sort of went away. It floated off me like a hat carried off by a strong wind. Harry Hare, my favorite cartoon show since I could remember. Randall's too, even though he wouldn't admit it at the time, was too old and cool for a cartoon like Harry Hair anymore. But still, when he held up that computer, he had a smile on his face the way he used to smile on Saturday mornings. Back when he was nicer to me, back when it still felt like we were friends, we would always make sure we were up early enough to catch the show, wouldn't miss Harry and all his crazy adventures for anything. The way he'd get the better of all the bad characters trying to get him, make rabbit stew out of him, bonking them on the head with his mallet and shoving carrots up their noses. At one point in every episode, it always looked like the bad guy was going to get him. But no matter what, Harry would get loose somehow. Harry hair always came out on top. I took a seat next to my brother, tried to swipe the computer out of his hands, but he turned and threw an elbow in my ribs that knocked the air out for a second. But I didn't make a stink about it. I hissed and rubbed the sore spot and screwed it up close to him. It seemed like he was in one of his good moves that night. He was having less and less of those. Like the older he got, the madder he got. Stopped wanting to play with his dumb little brother because he, he said I was too much of a faggot, baby. So I didn't want to start a fight, especially not when there was cartoons to watch. He started to tap the play button in the middle of the screen, the finger hovering over it. He smiled at me. 
Are you going to tell mom and dad now? No, I won't. I swear I won't. Just play it. Come on. Push it. Randall! He laughed. Okay, okay, don't shit your diaper. He lowered his finger, but something strange happened. Instead of his finger tapping the touch screen where the play button was, it sort of sunk into it, like the screen was made out of liquid. It only sunk down the length of his fingernail, then he pulled his hand away like he just touched a hot stove, looked at his finger like he never knew he had one until then. What, what was that? Don't know, Randall said, and dipped his finger in one more time, this time deeper than his whole hand. Randall, I said, tugging on the shoulder, stop, take your hand out of, when Randall screamed, I screamed too. Jumped away from him and covered my head with my arms. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but it sure wasn't like anything that actually did. Even as I was looking at the thing flopping around on the end of Randall's hand, I wasn't sure what it was. I mean, I knew what my eyes were telling me it was, but I didn't believe it. Not at first, because a thing like that wasn't possible. At least that's what I thought at the time. Randall swung his arm, ran around the room trying to get it off knocking over things, one of Mom's tables fell, the one with all her collectible Jesus figures, and each one of those glass lords crashed and broke apart. After about a minute of Randall panicking and yelling for me to help him, he finally calmed down, smiled, poked at the thing, and laughed. It don't even hurt. The thing was a fish, but not no regular fish. It was a cartoon, straight out of Harry Hare. I've seen those same fish on the show a million times. After Harry finishes up with whatever adventure he has that week, he always drinks carrot juice from his flask and goes fishing at the pond by his rabbit hole. And when he catches a fish, it always looked just like the one dangling from Randall's finger. A blue one, but not the kind of blue you'd see on a normal fish. No shiny scales that turn blue when the light hit them just right. This fish was blue, pure blue, like someone colored it in with marker. It had a darker blue color where a shadow might fall and a lighter blue for highlights where light might hit it. Only the shadow and highlight didn't match the room. When Randall turned the fish, the colors stayed the same. Come here, Randall said, and yanked the fish free. It's cold, like ice. Come feel it. I shook my head. Come on, quit being a faggot. It's a fucking fish. That ain't right. That ain't supposed to happen like that. He held it in his palms, lifted it up, and sniffed it. Stinks, he said. Then he stuck out his tongue and licked it, turned and spat on Mom's carpet. His spit was blue. Tastes like shit. Put it down, Randall. Come on. Only a week earlier, I found Randall doing something that I didn't know any person had the heart to do. Something that gave me the runaway feeling. But it was my brother, as much of an asshole as he could be and as scary as he was starting to become, I told myself he was still my brother, that it wasn't right being scared of him like that. He made me promise not to tell mom or dad about it, so I told him I wouldn't, and I never did. It wasn't anything they needed to know about anyway. He was in the backyard, on the side of the house by the hose. I heard the hiss of the water running, so I went over there to see what he was up to. I could hear him laughing. Not a hard laugh, not the kind of laugh like when we watched our favorite Harry Hare episode, when Harry bonks Cooter Coon over the head with his mallet, driving him into the dirt down to his neck. Tweety birds appear and circle the raccoon's head, and Harry sprinkles water over him so that a tree grows right out of Cooter's forehead and the birds had a place to live. The laugh was more quiet than that, like he didn't want nobody to know he was laughing. What you doing, I said, but he didn't need an answer because I saw what he was doing. He looked up and when he saw it was me, he just smiled, waved me over with a jerk of his head. Remember them cats we saw fucking all them months back? Mom said they were just play fighting. You hear the noise they was making? Them cats were fucking. Mom told you that because she didn't want you jacking your dick thinking about no pussy cats. <laughs> Where'd they come from? I pointed to the kittens he was holding underwater in the plastic bucket we used when mom and dad made us wash the car. See, the way it works, dumbass, is two cats fuck, the girl cat gets pregnant, then these little cutie pies pop out her back end. Well, what are you doing that for, Randall? Let him go. I pushed him and he lifted his hands out of the bucket and backed away. Still smiling, he let me push him out of the way because he was already, it was already too late. Kittens were sunk to the bottom of that bucket, dead. Water was red and I saw it was because Randall was pushing down so hard on the things that he squashed a couple of them, made them bleed. One had its guts coming out of its mouth like it was trying to blow a bubblegum bubble. I cried. I cried hard and loud, and he slapped a hand over my mouth so fast and rough that I cried harder, only it wasn't loud because of the hand blocking the way. Holding me like that, hurting me, he whispered into my ear, you tell mom or dad about this and I'll drown him in the bucket next, understand? I nodded and he let go. We went to the playground after that, buried those kittens in the sand real deep so nobody would ever find them. Then we just played like normal, going down the slides, swinging on the swings, 
I didn't feel normal, but I was too scared to act any other way because Randall kept on looking at me like he was daring me to act different. We never talked about the kittens again. Randall set the fish on the ground, watched it flop around. Everything had touched the stained blue. Like whatever ink the artist used to paint the thing was rubbing off, and it didn't show on the fish. It was just as pure blue as it was when Randall first pulled it out of the device. You're not going to come look at it? I can see it from right here. But don't you think it's, I don't know, cool? No? Something like that ain't supposed to be possible, Randall. It's not natural. Put it back and let's get rid of that iPad thing. Hell no. Don't you see what this means? He raised his foot and stomped down on the fish. The blue exploded and splashed onto the walls. All three shades of it. The colors didn't mix on impact. Each one stayed its own shade, dripping off hung pictures and lamps and the broken pieces of Jesus's. What'd you do that for? You're the one said to put it back. In the computer thing, not kill it. Randall shook his head, laughed the way he laughed with the kittens. It's a cartoon, boy. It can't kill a cartoon. It ain't real. I pointed to the pieces of the fish, each small chunk still moving, wiggling. If it ain't real, then why is it in our living room? And what's all that blue stuff? Cartoon blood, retard. I almost asked him how we were going to explain all the mess to mom and dad, but considering I had just watched my brother pull a cartoon fish out of a digital tablet and then stomp on it, getting in trouble with our parents didn't seem all that important. I snuck a look at the device lying on the ground where Randall had left it, and staring right at me from the other side of the screen was Harry Hare. He had a look like he could see me the same as I could see him, a look I had never seen on my favorite cartoon rabbit's face. Randall, I see it. I see it all right. And he dove to the floor, got the fish blood all over his clothes. Harry still had his big eyes on me, sort of started to smile. Seeing him smile like that made me feel a little better about the situation. The whole thing was weird, impossible, but if Harry Hare could be real, if he could come into our house, play with us, take us on adventures, then maybe it was okay. Maybe instead of scary, it was a miracle. Before I had a chance to think about it anymore, Randall shoved his arm through the computer screen again, up to his elbow, then his shoulder. He pushed so deep that his left ear and part of his face dipped down into it. Grab my feet. I did, and then he started kicking, and he was sucked halfway into the screen. It didn't look big enough to fit all of them, but somehow his body squeezed through, and I almost lost my grip on his feet because of the way he was kicking. I pulled as hard as I could, started to cry, but never let go. And then he was free, like the screen spat him out, and he wasn't alone. I'll stop there. <laughs>